What's up guys? So I have a bit of a problem. The Game Boy Color that I have is the one that I got for Christmas as a kid back in either 98 or 99. I don't remember exactly what year I got it, but I know it wasn't, I know I was young. And one day whenever we were in the car, I was playing a game, yeah, we were going somewhere and I accidentally dropped it and the speaker kind of screwed up on me. It does still work. There's absolutely no volume. Like right now it is maxed out and I doubt you'll even be able to hear this. Ever so quiet, but it is, it is there. So what I think happened is when I dropped it, it crapped the speaker. Something happened to the speaker itself and it just stopped working. It didn't, it stopped working properly. I was looking around for spare parts and I found a replacement speaker on eBay that I ordered. So I'm gonna, to see if I can actually get this guy working again. I have had this apart. I have looked at the speaker and it is particularly crunchy looking. So even if replacing the speaker doesn't fix it, having something new in there is gonna add, it is not gonna be, you know, problematic. That is still gonna be beneficial to it at once I am able to figure out what the problem with the sound is. I do believe that it is the speaker is shot from the impact of the fall. I thought, hey, let's make a video showing you guys how to replace the speaker. So let's come to the table and I'll walk you guys through the process. Now, to do this, you're obviously going to need the Game Boy. You're going to need some screwdrivers. You're gonna need both a Phillips bit and a tri-wing bit. So I've sang the praises of this iFixit kit enough. Um, if you're even halfway on the fence about getting one, you should get one. You will need a soldering iron. And you probably, you won't need, but you probably will want some tweezers of some kind just to help get a little, just to help you get a little closer to what you're trying to do without having to get your hand actually near the soldering iron. Let's get started. Now, first thing you know, obviously you're gonna wanna take the batteries out of the Game Boy because you do not want power to this while you're trying to solder and also you can't open it with the battery still in there. So to open the outer shell you are going to need the tri-wing screwdriver. Either a Y0 or a Y1 is going to do the best. Uh, Y1 seems to be the better fit though. And then the back cover will just lift right off. Set the back cover off to the side. We won't need that again until we come to put this back together. So here's your speaker and it is wedged-ish underneath the main board here. So you don't have to take the main board out of the body to get it out, but I, I, I just would if I were you. It makes it easier. You got less to fiddle around with trying to squeeze it into this body. You can just get right to it if the board's out of the body. the board is loose. But before we take it out, uh, we need to remove this ribbon cable here. So this is one of the places where tweezers is gonna come in handy. So if we can punch in real quick, you see these, you see the, the white here, well, it has these black tabs up in both corners. Those are what are actually holding the ribbon cable in place. So you can just get something on the bottom, on the underside of it and just push it up and away from the main clip. See? And now that has released the ribbon cable and it should pop right out. And that's what actually connect, that ribbon cable is what actually connects the screen to the motherboard and then you can get this and just set it aside as well. Because now we have what we need. There is our culprit and as you can see here, it is particularly crunchy. So I'm going to drop this, the board here, into my helping hand so we can have access to our speaker and we can get this bad boy free. So this is where the soldering iron comes in because these speakers are soldered to the boards, but it is just with two points. So you can just pop it there and pop it there and then it's free but yeah let me just let you have a look at that it's particularly dirty 
It looks, it looks, it looks gross. So hopefully the new speaker here will be a much better uh, fit for what we're trying to do. Now, I don't care for the fact that this speaker doesn't have like a housing around it like this one does, but that shouldn't be a problem as long as we get it lined up in the correct spot. Now, the biggest issue is I don't actually know which of the solder points on this speaker to use. I'm probably going to just attach it to one of them and then put the thing back together and see if it works. We are gonna lower this down very carefully. So that way I can just use my desk here as a solder point. I can use these tweezers here to hold the wire against the solder point and then just solder it in place. And now I will come back with extra solder to clean this up once I know I have it in the right spot. So I should be able to just put this guy right back together and it will either work or not. So let's do that and see if I did it right or if I did something wrong. That sounded good. Let's throw Tetris in here. Let's see how we sound. So this is still at max volume. That definitely sounds better. So let's get this back apart. Let's add a little bit more solder to that uh, uh, speaker and we'll get this put back together. And that's that. It's a very easy repair if that's actually your problem and it definitely seemed like it was mine. It doesn't seem quite as loud as it was as it, when I was a kid, but that could be because this is a higher, this might be a higher impedance speaker than the original one was. But either way, it's nice to be able to hear my Game Boy Color again. So that's gonna be it for this video. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching and I look forward to bringing you even more helpful videos like this as the days go on. So again, Thank you guys for being here and I'll see you in the next one. Have a good one, y'all.